If you're a Texas landowner and you're interested in improving the quality of the genetics on your ranch, you can contact me at DeerAndWildlifeStories.com. Howdy everybody, I'm Keith Warren and this week on Deer and Wildlife Stories, we're gonna be in the great state of Michigan. We'll take you to three different deer farms, but first, we're gonna start out at a deer farming convention. Actually, it's the United Deer Farmers of Michigan annual convention and we'll tell you what it's all about. As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. Hi, my name is Doug Roberts. I'm president of the United Deer Farmers of Michigan. UDFOM is a nonprofit association, and our main goal is to be the voice of the deer farming industry in the state of Michigan. Each year, UDFOM holds a convention at Soaring Eagle Casino in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. In 2019, it'll be March 8th and 9th. All of the major deer breeders and ranchers will be there, and a lot of them from even out of state. If you have any interest in learning more about the deer farming industry or even starting into the deer farming industry, I highly recommend that you attend this open to the public convention. What makes the Michigan convention unique is it's not just the Michigan deer farmers that attend, it's deer farmers from all over the country. And those deer farmers actually donate semen and other deer related items to help raise money. So annually, the Michigan Association can fund different projects at the national level and the state level. As of today, the deer farming industry in the state of Michigan is probably the strongest it has ever been. Let me explain why. One, we have the unique ability of having over a hundred different hunting preserves or ranches, private ranches where people come and hunt just in the state of Michigan. So the breeding industry, the deer farming part of the industry has a tremendous job of supplying the stocker bucks for those ranches. So not only do we are we in a breeding mode where we have to breed more and more deer each year because more and more hunters are coming to the ranches to harvest those bucks. So the status of the, of the industry in the state of Michigan is as strong and as healthy as it's ever been. Over the years, the Michigan border has been very confusing to many people in the deer farming industry. Let me explain what is happening with our border. The border is closed to what we call stocker bucks. Stocker bucks are bucks that would be groups of bucks that would go to ranches and would be harvested by hunters over time. That is closed, but it is open to breed stock. If a unique farmer in the certification program for CWD wants to bring animals in from safe farms, they may do that and it may be held on their farms for breeding over the next three to four years. So the Michigan border is open for breed stock, but closed to stocker bucks. The United Deer Farmers of Michigan will be setting up one person with virtually everything it takes to be a deer farmer. To register, go to winadeerfarm.com. The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds. Viewer feedback is presented by Protect the Harvest, Protect the Hunt. All right, this one is from a guy by the name of Gary. It's off our Facebook page. It says, I'm hoping you can help me regarding chronic wasting disease and how serious of an issue it really is. I'd like to start deer hunting here in Wisconsin, but my take is that deer hunting could possibly be dangerous to our health. Do you think that the negative information that's being distributed by not just the Wisconsin DNR, but other states too, will have a negative impact on hunter participation? 
Gary, great question, and absolutely it has a negative impact. Is CWD an important issue? You doggone right it is, but I think it's being way blown out of proportion by lots of different states, and the one thing that we don't want to happen is people stop their love of the white-tailed deer or stopping deer hunting, and so it's for that purpose that we're doing everything we can get them to get as much research as we can to get an end to chronic wasting disease. Our first stop will be at the Gutierrez Servid Company, where Robert Sergi is doing some fantastic things with embryo transfers. I'm Robert with Gutierrez Servid Company. We're located in West Michigan. We have roughly 900 deer in about 100 acres of a breeding facility, anywhere ages from one to about nine years old. Like most deer breeders in Michigan, we're members of the United Deer Farmers of Michigan. United Deer Farmers of Michigan is an organization that represents all different farms and hunting ranches all around the state, and it's an organization that exists to help us deer farmers. Every year, the second weekend in March, the United Deer Farmers of Michigan comes together and holds a convention. We do this to unite all the deer farmers all around Michigan. We'll discuss different topics that will help everybody improve their success at raising deer. So GCC has about 100 acres. Uh, that's inside the enclosure. We have myself as the breeding manager. We have Kevin, who does most of the maintenance, and Robert, who is the director of the breeding facility. Um, we as well have interns that take care of the bottle feeding so that I can focus more on the, the pens themselves. We have about 900 deer right now in the breeding facility. All right, so last of July, and we are in uh, Michigan right now. We're at the Gutierrez Servid Company. We started out earlier in the deer barn. We showed you some pictures of some of the big bucks that they're using to breed out here. And these are some of the biggest deer in the world. And so right now we're in the one-year-old pen. I'm with Jake. Jake runs this operation. And I want you to tell me about these deer. What's so special about these bucks? So these are embryos. Uh, we did a lot of research over the last few years going around a lot of the top breeders in the country and really handpicking what we thought was the best producing does. Um, we were able to purchase some and we flush embryos. Okay, so hold on a second. Let me just stop you right there. Yep. All right, embryos. I want to talk about that because we have not done talking about that on Deer and Wildlife Stories really ever. What we talk about is improving genetics. You always bring in semen from some of the biggest bucks out there and you put them in your does. And then you get a, a nice offspring, hopefully. But the thing is, we've also shown you on the program that the power really comes from the doe side. Out of all these bucks in this one-year-old pen, how many are out of that embryo program? Every single one of them. You're kidding me. Every one of them. Okay, folks, what th that blows my mind because it is, it is very expensive to do this. But as you can see the result, there are some unbelievable deer. And the reason why is because not, not just because they have a great top side, but the bottom side are some of the best does in the industry. And you brought them right in here. So, and you bring them in. And uh, now the process is very similar to uh, with lap AI. I mean, it's a surgical procedure, but it takes a little bit more time. You got to run the dose through to get them cycle right. But 100% uh, of these bucks in here are embryos. 100% of them. Holy smokes. Now, I know you've got to have some sisters to these guys because you don't, just don't have bucks. We do. We have lots of sisters. Okay. So, we're going to look at those sisters here in a little bit. I want to point something out to y'all. Every single deer on this farm is for sale, whether it's the biggest buck or the littlest doe. And every one of them is in the North American Deer Registry too, to where that means it's got a pedigree on it. I mean, there are some bucks in here that are just unbelievable. But right now what we want to do, we want to head on over and take a look at these guys' sisters. Give them a phone number that they can call to, if they want to talk to you about what's going on here at the Gutierrez Servant Company. Yeah, you can call us at 231-745-8000. And we've got some information coming up here in a little bit. If you're a youngster, you're looking for a cool summer job, don't go anywhere because you're going to like what you hear. You know, earlier in the show, we showed you the yearling bucks that were embryo bucks right here at GCC. Well, these are the sisters to those embryo bucks. These are all embryo does and they are all for sale, just like every deer on this place is for sale. And the one thing I want to point out that if you're a if you're a young person and you're interested in getting into deer farming, there is no better way than the way I'm fixing to tell you. And if you're a person that want to get into deer farming anyway, you need to call the folks at GCC just to be able to come out and see this for yourself and experience what a day on the deer farm is like. But if you're a young person, say you're just out of high school or you're fixing to go into college or you're interested in agriculture, 
you love white-tailed deer and interested in looking for a cool summer job, what you need to do is go to the Texas A&M Job Board and GCC hires kids as interns every single year that come right here and they work right here in Michigan with the white-tailed deer and it's those kids that are the future of the deer farming industry. When we come back, we'll introduce you to a small family with a big operation up here in Michigan. The United Deer Farmers of Michigan will be setting up one person with virtually everything it takes to be a deer farmer. To register, go to winadeerfarm.com. If you're in Texas and interested in becoming a deer farmer, you can contact me for deer farming franchise opportunities right here in Texas at deerandwildlifestories.com. We just arrived at BR2 Whitetails and we'll show you how a small family has maintained such a beautiful deer farm. My name's Paul Eckert. Here we're at BR2 Whitetails up in Gaylord, Michigan. I started this deer farm with my uh, wife and my daughter and my son 14 years ago and we've been going at it ever since. The last eight or nine years, my son Kyle took it to the next level and just enjoying every minute of it. Hi, I'm Kyle Eckert. I'm the general manager at BRT Whitetails. Um, we have about 350 animals here in uh, Gaylord, Michigan. Uh, right now, we're currently running um, 22 breeding pens. Uh, we've got right around 80 bucks. Um, we've fallen out about 70 does a year. Um, and then we've got about 35 doe fawns coming into our breeding program for 2019. So we started deer farming about 13 years ago. Um, we had a passion for white-tailed deer. Uh, we had been practicing management on our property. Uh, we just weren't seeing the results we were looking for, the genetics that just weren't there. Um, so we started doing some research into deer farming, um, found some local farms in our area, um, reached out to them, uh, contacted the uh, state, and got all of our license requirements. And um, we started building a deer farm uh, just to see if we can improve the quality of the genetics that were on the property. And over the past 13 years through uh, lap AI and um, direct breeding, we've improved the, you know, the quality of our animals and uh, we look forward to the future. Deer farming here at BR2 Whitetail started out as, uh, as a hobby farm, but uh, my son, and with his passion, turned it into a way of life. He works here full-time with two other full-time employees and a couple of part-time bottle feeders. Um, and I assist as much as I can, but it's a way of life. No matter where you're deer farming, the most important thing is animal husbandry and making sure the animals are good and healthy. And many times, if you have enough animals, I guarantee you're gonna have a problem. So these animals here, for example, we got one that's got uh, a little bit of bloating and then another one that's got two broken legs. Now, if these animals were in the wild, they'd be dead. Uh, Mother Nature is cruel and I'm not gonna uh, see if these animals make it. But deer farmers uh, pay attention to the animal husbandry and therefore that's the reason why they like gentle deer so they get their hands on them, get their eyes on them, look at them. If somebody's sick, if somebody needs help, they bring them inside a facility and they help them out. And just check that out. I mean, that deer with the broken legs, was pretty cool. The deer market in Michigan is very strong. Um, there's a high demand for bucks. Uh, does are selling really well in auctions. Uh, the nice thing about deer farming is it doesn't take much acreage. Uh, you can do it on as little as you know three or four acres. Um, so if you're interested in becoming a deer farmer, you can contact us at www.br2whitetailsalesandservice.com. All right, so these are two-year-old bucks, and as you look at them, uh, I want you to know if you're thinking, uh, do these folks out here, do they AI deer? They do about 60 to 70 deer a year. Uh, laparoscopically and so uh, they just really now started getting into the embryo which is going to elevate them to the next level but as you look at these two-year-olds uh, there's some exceptional ones but what's exciting what's going on here in Michigan is the fact that they're trying to determine a, a CWD resistant animal and uh, these animals are being tested throughout not just this farm but farms throughout the country now to find out if they can find a genetic strain that is CWD resistant. And just imagine if we can find a resistant CWD strain of deer, think about what the future would be, not just for deer farming, but the future for deer enthusiasts all over the country. So with it being the end of July, these deer up here in Michigan still have got quite a ways to go. And so you can tell, I mean, there's some outstanding deer. Uh, some of these bucks may be used as cover bucks uh, after the breeding goes. In other words, after they do the embryo program, they'll come back later and test, do a blood test and see who's bred and who's not. The ones that are not bred, they're gonna cover, they're gonna life cover with a buck. So they're gonna wait till these guys grow out to make a decision, number one, what they look like, number two, what the pedigrees are, before they actually make a decision on who they're gonna put on those does to breed them. 
When we get back from the break, I'll introduce you to a man who has self-funded what could possibly be one of the greatest things to ever happen to the deer farming industry. The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by New Dart, leading the industry in accuracy. Simpson Whitetail Genetics. It has to be one of the most unique deer farms I've ever visited. Located so close to a major metropolitan city, yet they're growing such big, beautiful deer. And they're cracking the code on what may change the deer industry forever. My name is Dennis Simpson. I'm the owner of Simpson Whitetails Genetic Testing in Belleville, Michigan. We are a deer farm here, Simpson Whitetails. We've been doing it for about five years. Uh, we got into the business because we're, we're avid hunters and uh, we just love the animals. Our deer farm is very small. We're only on three acres and we're located just outside of Detroit, Michigan. You don't have to have a lot of property to raise deer successfully. We, we've, we're on three acres and uh, we, we love the deer farming and we're, we're very committed to it. Um, in the last year though, we've learned about the CWD resistant markers from Dr. Haley and um, it's kind of changed the, the whole program here. We're, we're dedicated to stopping CWD and we've started a lab to actually test the deer and find the markers and help the breeders get to a point where we can breed these things correctly and try to make an end to CWD. I want you to put on a jacket. Nice. Last time I wore something like this, I was in Canada deer hunting. <laughs> It was cold though, it's warm in here. We've set up robots to do this work. Instead of hand pipetting like a research lab, we want a production environment where we can handle the herd. So basically the hair is gonna come out, it's gonna go into the first robot. We're gonna extract the DNA, the raw DNA, and have it ready to go into the next process, which we call PCR. So basically we've set up a lab and we do genetic testing here. We take the samples from the farms we strip the DNA off them, we process it, we purify it, and we read the markers. This is, this is a big change in our life and it's a big change for the industry. The process begins with the sample coming in. We, we load, there's a small bio room and we load every sample into what's called a 96 well plate. We, we set it up for high production. Once it's loaded in the well plate, everything goes through a robot. We have two different robots back there. There's a process for actually digesting the sample and extracting the raw DNA. That's done by robot number one in the back. The next process is called PCR. And what we're doing there is we're taking the, the genomic DNA that we create on the first robot, we're purifying it, we're splitting out a very, very small section that's related to the genetic resistant markers, and then we're replicating that into billions of copies. That process, it takes a very, very short amount of time. Once it's all replicated, it's sent off to what's called a sequencer. The sequencer takes that DNA and makes a chromatograph out of that DNA. That, that is a, a digital readout of the actual genetics. Once that's done, it comes back here and we put it through our software and we read those genetics to find the genetic resistant markers. So when the process is, is complete, you're gonna receive a certificate. That certificate shows the marker that we read on the animal, your, your tag number, and a view of the chromatogram that we, we used for your animal. This kind of needs to be the standard in the industry for testing. A couple of things that I'm really impressed with about uh, Dennis's operation is, number one, about the farm. It's, it's small in size, he's raising some really great deer, but the fact that it's so close to the Detroit airport, I can't believe you can't hear the airplanes going overhead right now. But another thing that uh, I'm absolutely uh, so proud of Dennis about is, taking the proactive approach about doing something about chronic wasting disease. CWD is a serious disease and Dennis has taken it upon himself to uh, deal with research that's been gotten by Dr. Nicholas Haley. And he, Dennis is actually taking steps to help end chronic wasting disease. So I wanna encourage you, anybody that's interested in learning more about what Dennis is doing right up here out of Detroit, Michigan, please get a hold of him. If you have any questions or comments about the show and you're watching online, go ahead and post them below and we'll get back with you. My name is Keith Warren and thanks for watching Deer and Wildlife Stories.